Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City where we want to help you build a Lego city regardless of the space you have. Welcome to episode 2 of the Brick Design Breakdown. This is a live stream midweek where we talk about Lego building techniques and mock ideas. So it's a bit different from Coffee and Bricks which is a different live stream and that happens on the weekend. If you're around, please do join in and this is a live chat. So please uh, let yourself be known. Tell us where you're from and tell us what time it is in the world. Now, this is also done at a different time from Coffee and Bricks. So I know that we'll be getting a different audience. Our friends in Europe are probably still sleeping, but we should be having lots of uh, friends from the US and Asia over here and of course in Australia because normally during the weekend live streams uh, the Australians would be sleeping. This stream will go on for about I would say 45 minutes depending on how much ground we cover and in this particular stream we talk about building techniques. It's different in terms of the setup for the regular live streams and I'll even show you the whole presentation is different as well. So what you're going to see is my hands right over here and we'll be just showing different techniques and we'll be discussing. This is a time to share. This is a time for you to also offer your ideas and suggestions. So please let yourself be known in the live stream. All right. So what we're going to be talking about today, I'll be getting to that in just a bit. Or well, any, I'm not sure if you can see me early on. You might have seen the graphic, the brick design breakdown. I hope you saw that. And right now you should be able to see the camera. All right. So today we're going to be talking about a few things. But the first thing we're going to talk about is roof attachments for modular buildings. Basically, how to fit the roof onto a modular style building. But before we start, I'd just like to remind you guys, if you want to support the channel, you can do so in different ways. Hit that like button, that's the easiest. If you're watching the stream or the replay, please hit that like button. Super chats are enabled, so if super chats are enabled in your country, you can hit that dollar sign and donate any amount you like. And finally, you can head over to smallbrickcity.com slash shop and check out all the stuff that we have there. We've got various items on sale from our books, our building instructions, and even merchandise. And I'm really excited to announce that we have three brand new products. And this is our post office, food truck, and police post. These were really popular builds and we've finally got the building instructions up, including the parts list, all this are available at smallbrickcity.com slash shop. So for those who have been asking for it, do head on over after watching this and, you know, order your favorite live build. I should also mention that we're running a bit of a promo because uh, some people have mentioned they like to buy a couple of things. So we thought we'll help everyone out. So if you head over to smallbrickcity.com slash shop and uh, you spend 30 US dollars or more, you will get 15% of your spending. But you need to use a promo code and the promo code is tourist. So you just type in this promo code in the coupon box upon checkout. And tourist, that refers to a small brick city tourist because you are a tourist in our city. I should mention that this uh, discount applies to the digital products only. They do not apply to the physical merchandise and printed books. But anything which is a digital product, which includes all our building instructions and also the digital version of the book, Bricks or Small Places, you can get 15% off if you enter that tourist code. And this will apply all the way to the end of the weekend. So it's only going on for five days. So if you want to take advantage of it, head over to smallbrickcity.com slash shop after this and check out the new products that we have as well as the old ones in case you miss them. All right, so with that out of the way, why don't we get started? I'll be taking questions and answering questions uh, midway as well as at the end of this live stream. So stick around and save your questions for later. But right now, why don't we just get into it? And the first thing we're going to discuss is how to attach modular style roofs onto buildings. Now, I've got a mini house here. If you joined us for episode three of Coffee and Bricks, you might have noticed this. Uh, this 
is obviously the small house that we built in that particular live stream but I'm using it in this example so just take it as an example of what we're discussing so if you're familiar with modular style buildings and of course I'm talking about the expert modular style buildings the roofs and each level can be removed and that's because they are placed on top of the building or the floor and they're held together in different ways and I'm going to discuss different ways that a roof or a floor can be attached to the top edge of a floor below so typically this is one of the common ways and is to use jumper plates so what happens on the top edge you would use towels so these are towels the smooth brick elements and you would put in the jumper plate and I'm using a 1x4 jumper plate over here so it's a bit hard to see with the light but basically it's like a smooth towel but there's studs on the two ends and I'm using two of them now for such a small build you really do not need to use two 1x4 jumper plates with four studs it will be a really tight fit when you place your roof on but you can guarantee it will not fall off course the problem is if you have too tight a fit when you pull off the roof sometimes this may come out with your roof okay it happens from time to time but one of my favorite ways or the go-to ways that I use for attaching the roof to the top of the wall is to use these 1x4 jumper plates however I don't always use this and I'll go through different techniques uh, but let's talk about where to place these jumper plates because I do see people build their mocks and they do use these 1x4 jumper plates but they seem to put it randomly all over the edge uh, there doesn't seem to be any particular way they do it and honestly sometimes I think they overuse the jumper plates you really do not need to use so many of these jumper plates just to hold down a roof or a floor remember the whole purpose is really to hold it in place so it doesn't slide off it is not meant to really hold it in the sense for there to be clutch power so generally you do not turn over your mock and expect the jumper plates to hold the roof this is a really tiny house and really just for the demonstration purposes for these live streams but in a general normal mock that you build there's really no reason why you want to turn this upside down if you are using jumper plates the whole idea is just to have enough clutch power and clutch power is really just the interlocking of the tubes and the studs to hold something in place you want enough clutch power so that the roof will not slide off easily so if you are to just move it around or you accidentally hit it lightly it doesn't fall off that's basically it so you only need enough of these jumper plates so that the roof will not slide off if you move it around now how do you determine how many jumper plates you need well what I recommend is to go with this approach regardless of the size of your build always place your jumper plates and I'm talking about these 1x4 jumper plates specifically for uh, this section of the discussion you place them in opposite diagonal corners of your build you may depending on your build you may put it on the extreme end as I've done over here or you may put it maybe offset by one or offset by two there are different reasons why you might do the offset I mean you might be thinking why do you only put it uh, or why do you not only put it at the end sometimes it could be due to the building uh, structure underneath now one rule when you build Lego is to always try to take the plate or the brick above bricks that you have built or plates that you have built and always cover the joints so notice this I've got a 1 by 3 brick over here and this is a 1 by 4 brick this goes over here so technically the way I should have built this the right way would have been to offset this by 1 because now my 1 by 4 jumper plate overlaps the joint between the bricks under it if I did it this way which I actually did this is technically not ideal because look nothing holds this down although I can make an argument that this 1x4 towel does hold that plate down but not ideal because you can't see it here but there's actually a split because of the joint and that split 
also travels up to these tiles over here. So that's not ideal. So sometimes, especially with a bigger build, in a smaller build, I think it's not so critical, but if you do a bigger build, you definitely want to overlap your joints. That's why your jumper plate may not be all the way to the end. But for the sake of the discussion, let's just keep it at the end. After you place one, you would want to look for the diagonal opposite corner. So diagonal opposite corner, and you would place that. You also want to place the two jumper plates in the same line. So you would not want to put one perpendicular to the other. You would want to put them in the same line. So if my jumper plates with the studs are here, opposite in the diagonal corner, I would have them here. I would not have them at right angles. So I won't have it like that. So that's kind of a basic rule you can follow. In the event that you place two of them and you place your roof or your building on, and for whatever reason you find that it's still sliding off, you might consider putting two more at the other diagonal corners or in the middle. But Generally, I have not found this to be necessary, and I'm talking about full-size modular buildings like on a 32 by 32 stud base plate. If you're doing a huge mock, maybe you're building something on a 48 by 48 stud base plate or even larger, then it's possible you might need to add more jumper plates. But generally, less is more. So experiment with two first and then add in another two and always go with kind of a mirroring effect. So one would always mirror the other and they kind of work in teams. I think that that's the best way to uh, look at it. So that's, for me, my most common way of putting in jumper plates to hold a roof in. Now, let me give you a few more alternate ways. Instead of using this 1x4 jumper plate, let's say you don't have these 1x4 jumper plates, what could you use? Well, you could use just 1x1 one one studs. So these are just your 1x1 one one plates, and you do the same thing. Place them in opposite corners, and you fill in the spaces with 1x3 tiles. So in this case, unlike the 1x4 jumper plate, which has two studs, I have just one stud on each side. But especially for a build this size, it'll be more than enough to hold it in place. See? And even if you have a bigger build, this technique would work. In fact, LEGO themselves uh, do use just a single stud like this for the top of their expert modeler buildings. They might put more, especially if your building is an irregular shape. What that means is if maybe you have a weird shape and you have internal walls inside, so it's not just a perfect square or rectangle like that. It's irregular and there are smaller walls inside. When you have retaining walls, you might need to put a single stud on as well because the retaining wall may not be so stable, especially if it doesn't connect on both sides to an external wall. Sometimes you might just have a divider because that's the design in your um, particular building. So imagine if you just had a wall here, which is a divider, it's connected to one external wall, but the other side is free. So what happens if it's just not as stable as, for example, the structure of an external wall? So what I would then recommend is to place a stud on that internal wall as well, because that means when you hold it, uh, place your roof down, not only does it clutch with the external walls, it also clutches with the internal wall. So there is a bit of trial and error, but again, don't overdo it. So you see, this is a common problem. This happens. Uh, I'm not sure if it's avoidable. Let me know if you have found a way to avoid this where the studs you place on the top of your building or your wall, uh, the, how do you prevent them from coming off with your roof? It still happens to me from time to time. So let me know if you have any solutions for that or is that just part of Lego life's problems? So using now single studs, that's one approach. Now let's say you do not have any studs, what can you do? And before I, I talk about that, maybe I should just mention uh, some people might be wondering, why don't you use the 1x2 jumper plate? These over here. So that's a 1x2 jumper plate, which is basically like a 1x2 towel, but with a single stud in the center. Now, the reason why you can't use a plate like this 
is just due to the Lego math and the way the studs and the uh, tubes underneath are spaced out. If you use a one by two jumper plate, it just won't connect with the right hole underneath on the underside of your plate. It just won't fit. It will not line up. So that's why you can't use this one by two jumper plate. You will have to use a one by one stud or you have to use that one by four jumper plate. So let's say you do not have any of these studs and uh, all you have is towels, okay? So let's assume that everything is towel as I'm putting it on right now. So what I've got now is a completely smooth surface. Obviously, if I have to place the roof on top like that, you see, there's no clutch power. So if I have to move it around, that roof just slides off. So obviously, we can't have that happening. So if you do not have a, a jumper plate or studs, there's still one more solution. You can take regular plates and you would look at the internal space created by your building over here. And you take plates like that so in this case, I'm putting a one by six plate on either side and I'm putting it one stud in. See, so this is one stud in from the edge of my plate. And then I'm gonna take two one by four plates to fill in the gaps here. So I'm almost creating now a smaller inner border with these plates. But what I've done is now I've created a lip of Let's see if we get that right. Yeah, we get a lip of one plate high. So what this does, it allows you to now set this in so it fits into the hole created by your building. So it basically just sits in. Now, this technique is not something I use all the time. I still find it a bit flimsy, especially if you do a lot of moving of your buildings around like I do within my Lego city. I'm always shifting buildings around, moving them from place to place. So this still, especially with a large building, can be a bit risky. You can see now, it's, it doesn't shift at least. And Lego does use this as an official technique for some of the builds. In fact, the Ninjago City build, uh, many of them, uh, different parts of that particular build uses this technique. So you're just sitting those plates inside so it doesn't shift around. So that's an easy, good solution and it does work. And it's also useful, especially like a build like the Ninjago building where you've got multiple uh, small builds that you want to put together. This might be more convenient than using studs because then you don't have to you know, pry everyone down. It's easily easier to separate the different sections of the build. But of course, it does mean that it's a bit more uh, less secure in the sense that you could you could of course not turn it upside down. That would just fall out. But that is one particular way. So those are just com some common ways to attach a roof to a building. Let me just show you one more example. Not with this, but the top of my skyscraper over here. So I've taken the top of my skyscraper, so it's just the really top and two floors. And the reason I'm showing you this is the use of two by two jumper plates. Now I talked about one by four jumper plates and I shared that one by two jumper plates could not be used to secure something down. But sometimes you would use two by two jumper plates. And let me show you with this part over here. Notice I've got two, four two by two jumper plates one in each corner. Now, the reason you do this, there are different reasons that you might do this, sometimes the wall that you build might be two studs deep or thick. They're not just using uh, one by something bricks, but the way you've just designed your building is to have two stud thick walls. As a result, you want to towel the top of the walls and you use these two by something plates like that. So you could use a two by two plate or two by four plate as I've done to just cover the top edge of the wall. Therefore, it makes sense to then use a two by two jumper towel. However, what's important to note is the underside of the roof or the floor above must also be two by something. So you couldn't take a roof with a one by something thickness and attach it to this two by two towel you would need to have a corresponding two by something plate so that it can fit on. As you can imagine, of course, something like this would be a really good snug fit. 
and it's also easy to take off but it's also very secure and you never have the problem of this 2x2 two two jumper plate coming off and sticking with this particular uh, underside of the preceding roof so that's that's just useful to know you don't always have to just use one by four jumper plates or one by one studs you can use these two by two towels or jumper plates as long as you have the right configuration and if i just show you this part over here so for this roof i'm just using the standard one by one stud and i'm just using two of them notice i didn't put them at the extreme corners and that's just due to the way that this underside was built i had to offset it but i mirrored it in diagonal corners and because again this is not very big this allows me to hold this roof firmly in place you see that's just two studs but look at the clutch power that's already very strong so that's just another look at how to attach roofs and levels to the preceding roof or level so let me know what you think do you have any problems uh, doing this particular technique is this something that you use and let me know in the comments and let me have a look at the chat to see who's here this is the first time i'm looking at the chat so let me bring it uh, up and we have liam thanks for joining us we have brick life samuel thank you so much Kawi's creation, Makita, lots of familiar names. Thank you so much, guys. I know for the people in the US, this is probably uh, nighttime. So if you haven't, as I always ask people to do, let me know where you're from and what time it is. And that's just to let everyone know in the chat as well as for us. So any thoughts on what you have just seen in terms of attaching the roof to the building? Anyone have any problems or does anyone have any questions? Hi, Adora Bill. Ruth, thanks for joining us. Generally for the Australians, yes, you do not have a chance to join in the live streams, especially when it's the middle of the night. So glad you could join in. So I'm going to share with you two more things in this particular live stream. One is an idea and one is a common segment that I have in the brick design breakdown and that is to discuss a particular Lego element and we can brainstorm together what ideas uh, we can to use these parts. But let's first talk about an idea. So in the previous brick design live stream, I shared my idea for this particular mock. So this is a mock that I built previously. It's the bottom half of a cafe and bookstore. And uh, what happened is I've taken away the top half and I've left with this. And this was actually remocked from the detective's office. And my idea was to create some kind of Kingsman inspired tailor shop come spy shop. So that's the idea. I think a lot of people like the idea and it still intrigues me. So I haven't really got around doing this because I was traveling the past week, uh, but I did put together a secret sliding bookcase. Or in this case, this could be a tailor's cloth. So imagine that these are all different cloths that you might find in a tailor. And this is the secret sliding bookcase, which can give you access to the secret lab area. So I thought I'll just share how I did this uh, in case you want to do such uh, a sliding bookcase. It's a cool thing to have in a house uh, or in a clubhouse or maybe you want to convert a bookshop, a library or some kind of retail store to have a secret panic room or an exit or you just want it to have it for fun. So let me just break down the design for this particular sliding bookcase. Of course, it's not so secret because if you as a human were to look at it, you can obviously see that there is a difference in the space. But you know, this is Lego. There are limitations to what we can build. I also have to work with the space that I have for this particular build uh, because eventually I still think I'm going to keep it, maybe not 12 studs because this is 12 studs. I'll keep it 16 studs. So this bookcase would still fit in, you know, so much and I could build one more bookcase on the other side so that it looks like a whole row of bookcases and it can slide so I'm gonna break down the design 
of this particular bookcase. So first to create the sliding element, you do need two of these rail plates. These are modified rail plates. And this is um, the two stud wide ones. So there are one stud wide modified rail plates, but you need the two stud wide ones because you do need that double groove in order to create this sliding bookcase. And just looking, Kawi said, build an escape room. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. I think that would be very interesting uh, with a storyline, Kawi. Yeah, maybe I might just do that instead of doing the tailor shop with the spy gear. I still could build a tailor shop kind of deal using that, but make it an escape room and make it a puzzle for subscribers to solve as well. So I think that's a great idea. I'm going to explore that. Hi, David Lego Lab. All right, let's continue over here. So you need those modified rail plates, uh, two studs wide, and then you need a bookcase. Now, the how did I determine the size of this? I basically used a door frame or window large window frame. This is basically exactly the same size. So I'm using this as a guide uh, just because it'll fit in uh, the building. And if I'm building a door elsewhere, everything kind of matches up. But you can build it any height that you want. Okay, so... Let's look at the bookcase here. So you need two separate sections of a bookcase. Let me just grab this piece off. And let's look at this one first. So how do you build this technique? If you've built such bookcases before, this is not new, but for those who have not built something like this before and like to get this look, basically I have a one by four brick, and then I've got a plate, a one by four plate here all these uh, tiles and plates to be books and then plates and then plates above so i need three one by four plates and one one by four brick now let's get into the bookcase part of it itself so this is how the section looks like so how do you create this vertical look of these tiles well the secret is on one side you're just using one by one bricks on the other side You've got a one by one brick over here, but this is not a one by one brick, it's a one by one modified brick. So there's a stud at the side. And here you basically have a bunch of one by two plates capped with a one by two towel. That's how you create the stack of books. And to create them so that they are vertical, you just take the back of one of the or the last one by two plate and put it against that modified brick and if you put them together like that on a one by four plate you basically get a bookcase now that's it's important that you note that is a one by two towel over here if you do not have this towel you end up with a floating uh bookcase or the book looks like they're floating and you get these exposed studs which looks weird. So take that off, just take a one by two towel, place it on, and now you place that. You have covered those exposed studs, and now you look like you have a proper bookcase, and I cover it with a one by four plate. So my finished bookcase, so I basically have two of these, and the one by four brick. And notice I do not towel this. If you have a standalone bookcase, you might take a one by four towel and cover it so that looks good. But the reason you don't do this for this case is because you will take this and push it on the underside of the real plate. See, so this is the side of the bookcase that does not move. So you need to build it solid. Now you have to, of course, imagine that this entire section will be built into the wall of the mock that I'll be building. And if you are building it, you would of course build it into your own building and then layer over the top here so that everything is locked in. But that's why you don't put a one by four towel over here. You do want to connect it to this modified rail plate here. Now for this particular one, you can of course build the exact same version, but I didn't do so for two reasons. One, to give visual variety, and second, I didn't have any more of those modified bricks. So in this case, it's much more straightforward. As you can see, all you're doing is stacking vertically or horizontally plates and bricks. 
So this is a very straightforward technique. I, I'm not going to break it down. I'm sure you can really see how to build this. Here you're using that snot technique or stud snot on top, being a bit creative by having this on its side. Therefore, you can have this vertical look. But this is just basically stacking and building everything up as you would in a normal Lego build. And once again, you do not tile the top. And that's so that you can put it into that groove. You can see that groove right here on the underside of that 1x2 rail plate. And there's a groove correspondingly on this side. And you can slide this in. And that's how you create that sliding bookcase. So whether I build an escape room, as Kawi mentioned, or my secret spy tailor shop i definitely want to use some kind of a sliding bookcase like that and i thought i'll share this idea with you and if you wanted to build this particular sliding bookcase for your own mock uh, you can adopt that idea all right so that is that idea let's head over to the chat for a minute and just see what people are saying and just to say hi to a couple of people too cool for school thanks for being here lee big mac Thank you very much. Better late than never. Could I, sh Makita asked if I could show the rail plate. Not sure if you saw it earlier, but I'm just going to show it to you once again. So that's the rail plate. It's a called a modified rail plate. If you go to Bricklink, you can just find that element. But this is the two stud wide rail plate. Let's see what else. <laughs> David says he likes nature. Fantastic. So a forest mod would definitely sound cool. Good night, Kawi. What time is it for us? Uh, right now, this is 10.30 a.m. for us. Oh, Ruth, I didn't know you are in the same time zone. I thought you were two hours ahead. But I guess you're in Western Australia, right? All right, and Samuel says he'll use the bookcase idea, planning for a bookshop. Fantastic. All right. Okay, let's go to the last section of this particular episode of the Brick Design Breakdown. And what I thought is interesting, each episode, if we take a standard eight Lego element and we just discuss how we can use it in different ways and how they can be used. So today I'm going to discuss using a standard 1x2 jumper plate and I talked about this earlier on when we we're talking about the roofs added to the modular buildings so a 1x2 jumper plate is this uh, it's just like a 1x2 tile but there's a stud in the center so this is what makes it unique it is a very useful plate and I think of course most people think about using this as a jumper plate where you put it onto your base plate so that you can put mini figs on. So are there any ideas you have to use these one by two jumper plates? And does anyone have any idea why it's called a jumper plate? I thought I read or heard somewhere someone given a reason why it's called a jumper plate, but I just can't remember why. So does anyone who's watching this, whether you're watching the replay or watching live now, do you know why? this is referred to as a jumper plate because if you look at the bricklink catalog uh, it's not referred to as a jumper plate i think it's just a modified towel with a stud so how can you use this one by two jumper plate as i mentioned you can use it to place it on a base plate so that you can put uh, a mini fig to stand i think that's one of the most common ways I'm going to give you some other ideas and of course, please share your ideas as well because this is a time where we learn together. You can use these as decorative elements. Let me give you an example. Um, I always like to use this one by two plate as a drawer, at the front of a drawer. And I always pair it with these headlight bricks. So these are modified bricks, but these are called headlight bricks because they're not like the regular one by one modified bricks with studs on the side because they have, they're inset slightly. So I use two of them and I place them onto a regular gray brick. In this case, I'm just using, uh, just for visual texture, I'm using this patterned modified brick, which has some grills. Put a one by two tile on top just to give it a smooth finish. And then I take this jumper plate and put it there. And now it looks like a small 
chest of drawers. And of course, if I want to add in more drawers, I'll just add in more so that's double or I can stack them on top. It can look like a large filing cabinet if you stack you know, four of them together. But that's uh, basically how I would use this as a decorative element and also functional in the sense that uh, it suggests what this is. So it's just, it isn't just for aesthetics. It also allows me to create the illusion of a drawer. If you're building a bigger drawer, you can also take a round towel run stud to put on and that can look like a handle for the drawer so that's another way to use this one by two jumper plate i also think it can be used as a decorative feature so just imagine if you have a wall and uh, you just want to break up the design of the wall you can just use these modified bricks or headlight bricks Put in a jumper plate horizontally like that and stack regular bricks and you do this at regular intervals so it just acts as a, a decorative feature to break up the wall uh, i've seen some people do that going back to the drawers you can also use these two by two modified bricks and if you have two of these jumper plates you can put them together and it looks like you have a chest of drawers so that's another way of using it. Now you can use these as functional elements. Now the most useful way to use these kinds of jumper plates is to offset your builds or your, I guess the design that you're building. Because notice that the stud is in the center of the plate. So it actually creates an offset by half a stud. Normally when you have a regular one by two plate, you have two studs. So this is almost in the middle of those two studs and therefore you create an offset. This allows you to use it in different ways and I'll, I'll show you one simple way. This is the sign from my medical center and the only way to create a symmetrical cross like this was to have it five studs long. If not, I could not get a symmetrical cross but five studs is an odd number. So when you have odd numbers, that does mess around with the lego math because generally the plates for lego are all even numbers so the only way you could create an even looking odd uh, number design such as this cross is to offset uh, the elements using the jumper plates sounds a bit complicated but let me just show you what i mean in order to create the particular uh, cross because it's odd numbered, I need to use jumper plates. I just couldn't use a regular plate because if I use the regular plate, there's no way you could come up with the even uh, cross. So I've used four of those one by two jumper plates and a two by two jumper plate in the center to create the offset. So I can put this one by one inside and if I did not have these one by two plates, there's no way I could then place these towels on. But because of these jumper plates, I can create the offset, see? So this gives me some leeway. I can almost put it anywhere, but of course I choose to push it close together. And this now allows me to create a sign like that with an odd a number of studs, but still give a symmetrical look. So. That's how you think of something. If you're trying to put something on and you realize, hey, things don't fit for whatever reason, maybe you're putting something at an angle or you have an odd number uh, build. Like for example, sometimes if you build a fridge, you might build a fridge which is uh, three studs off. You would then need to offset it on your base plate using jumper plates. Let me see if I have a fridge here. Yeah, I do. So I've got a fridge design over here. So this is a refrigerator, but it is two by three. So if I were to put it on a normal jumper plate, it would be pretty difficult uh, as, because especially if I want to place it close to the wall. Therefore, I use the jumper plates to offset it like that. So if I were to use one by two jumper plates, it would go on underneath like that. On this case, I'll put it to the back. And I could offset it and place it onto my base plate. 
So think of it as a functional tool to offset your build so that you can place them uh, if you have an uh, odd number of studs. Now let me show you another way it can be used. This is purely decorative. So example, you're building a column for or a section of a wall. So you're building a building and you decided, hey, you want to make it more interesting. You don't just want to make it flat. So here's an idea. So I'm using a couple of these masonry bricks and then we'll use some of these one by one modified bricks. So these aren't the headlight bricks. These are just the regular modified bricks. And of course you could use the one by twos. I'm just using two one by ones to create the one by two pattern like that. And let's say I sandwich this on like that. And let's say I've got, so I'm just creating a, a pattern here. So just imagine this is a column and let's build it up somewhat like that. Okay, so what I've got is masonry bricks, two bricks in between, and then I've got the modified bricks here. Now I'm going to use this to help create an offset pattern just for, this is purely aesthetic, but it just shows you what you can use with a jumper plate that you might not think of before. I'm covering the two one by one modified bricks with the one by two jumper plate like this. And I'm using one by two curved tiles. And let's do something like this. I'm placing one end of the towel over that stud. Now look at this. So let's just build this up. So imagine this is a column of sorts. Now you've created a very interesting looking design. Something you could not have created without the use of that one by two jumper plate. So imagine this is columns in a building that you're building for the front facade and maybe you have windows on either side. It creates a very nice texture and maybe I'll build a mock using this particular technique. And of course you could fit this on the other side like that or you could put it upside down. So depending on what you want. But that's how useful that one by two uh, plate is it allows you to offset uh, not just for a functional reason but also for a functional aesthetic reason like that to create a pattern you would not be able to create so that's just a couple of ideas that i came up with in preparation for this live stream on how to use the one by two jumper plates so what do you think do you guys have any suggestions on how to use the one by two jumper plates in a different way do let me know in the live chat and we'll bring up the live chat so that everyone can see it. And by the way, please like this video to support the channel. Super chats are enabled and they are appreciated. And also you can head over to smallbrickcity.com shop to check out some of our stuff. And of course, if you haven't and you're watching, please subscribe to the channel. That's right, always subscribe. That helps us out as well. Let's have a look at the chat before we wrap up the live stream. So Ruth says, Adora build, they're called jumper plates because they jump over a normal stud or jump between the standard studs. That does make sense. I agree that this, it creates a jump because it offsets. I, I would agree with that. So I think that's great. Anyone else? Do you guys have any ideas? Hey, Pinhead Productions, great to see you here. I think this is the first time you've joined a live stream. So glad to have you here. Samuel says he hadn't thought of using jumper plates in that many ways. Great. And that's exactly what this brick design breakdown live stream is all about to explore different building techniques and ways we can use Lego elements. All right, before we wrap up, uh, think of a uh, last couple of questions. And I just like to remind you guys, uh, we do have two new products which are ready and uh, or three new products. And that's the post office the food truck and the police post. These are original mocks and building instructions are now available at smallbrickcity.com slash shop. So do check them out after the live stream. And if you want to take advantage, we're running a promo till the end of the weekend. If you spend US $30 or more, you will get 15% off your order. And this applies to only digital products. All you need to do is key in the promo code TOURIST because you're a tourist to Small Brick City 
and you can do that put it into the promo coupon box upon checkout and you get your 15 percent off so do check out all those three brand new products and maybe in case you missed out some of the other building plans as well so let's have a look at a couple more questions and we'll close up this live chat Too Cool for School says, this is the first time you're watching it live. I hope you're enjoying the live stream so far. I hope you found the content valuable. Will Green, Linguist, you said you missed it. Yeah, I think you missed the most of it. We're about to wrap up very soon, but you can watch the replay and I really appreciate you dropping in. I believe this is the first time you've dropped into a live stream as well. But it's great to do the live stream at a different time because we do have different people coming in who aren't usually available for the weekend live stream. But do remember, the live stream for the weekend will happen on Saturday. For most of you, it'll be during the daytime. So do subscribe to the channel and check out uh, when the live stream will be up because by tomorrow, I'll put up the schedule for the live stream. And that's Coffee and Bricks, a completely different format, concept and presentation for the live stream. Too cool for school, what do I call you? I guess you call me JC. Right, guys, we are going to wrap this up. Any last questions? If not, we'll wrap this up. I thank everyone for your time. Really appreciate it. Remember, if you're watching this or the live stream, uh, do hit that like button. Pinhead Production says he likes building the column with the stud and then uh, putting up the plates. Yeah, I think that's a really simple but really uh you, the result i think is just so textured when you do something like that you know it is quite simple but there are just so many variations and you don't just have to use of course this one by two curve uh tile you could you put any kind of element but i do like the curved tile because i always suggest breaking up these straight surfaces or these rectangular blocky looking things with curved surfaces it just adds more texture to your builds and makes it look more refined Dejo B Tube, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, what does Annie say? There's no way I can get JC to go with me. Go to where? Go to Kmart or Target? I'm down to going to Kmart or Target. And I'm sure she's referring to Perth. Yeah, we can go to Perth. Of course we can go to Perth. You can handcuff me and then we'll go to Perth. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for your time. We'll be closing down this live stream. You guys have been awesome. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next live stream this weekend. Talk to you soon and check out all our other videos.